where power resides. It's intoxicating, it's magical. The interior was designed by a delusional psychotic called Fusion. The building is getting older faster than we're able to deal with it. The stonework, for example, is, is crumbling beyond recognition. It's so rare to see it from up here, and yet it's so familiar. The outlines of this building, the colour of the stone, the towers and the turrets, the gargoyles. And yet this building has hidden demons too, expensive ones. Look behind the grandeur, look behind the guilt. There's decay, some of it dangerous. Fires and floods are not uncommon in this architectural masterpiece of our democracy. But it is the grandest of grand designs. Now, even the position of the books on the shelves in the Lord's Library is listed. Touching anything, let alone keeping the building standing, is more complicated than the lurid patterns on the carpets. In a sense, we're moving backwards. The building is getting older faster than we're able to deal with it. And obviously, yes, the end point of that would be that you just couldn't use the building. It would literally begin to crumble. We're talking about very intricate, priceless Victorian artwork and books in, in, the, in this case, uh, and they could be lost forever. So, you know, there, there comes a point where by, beyond which you really don't want to go there to get to that state where effectively you're just sort of working in a, in, in a, a ruin. To fix it, the cost will be phenomenal. The annual DIY bill's already around £30 million. Some of the worst damage is on the famous skyline. It hardly even feels as if anyone's been up here for 150 years, let alone looked after it properly. But to restore it and make it safe will cost taxpayers dear. Newsnight has been told the working assumption for the cost of restoring the palace is three billion pounds. One senior insider said, I'd be surprised if it stays at that. An initial report costing the alternatives is complete, but the authorities are reluctant to start an almighty row, let alone reach a verdict before the election. Yet every day a decision's delayed, the fabric of the building gets worse. This is Cloister Court. It dates back to the 14th century, and historians here tell us no member of the public has ever been in here. Until the end of the Second World War, it's where MPs used to come and go. So Churchill, Gladstone, Disraeli would have hung their hats up here. It is a beautiful and a secret space, but it's falling down. Well, the main problems, as you can see, um, are uh, stone decay. Uh, you can see that the stone is crumbling, where it's weathering rather badly. Uh, there are bits of the facade missing, as you can see lower down. But also, there's a problem with the building moving. and. Some of the sides, some of the, the facades in, into the courtyard are actually sinking and we're going to have to investigate that very soon. So it's crumbling and it's sinking? It's sinking. It's not sinking very fast as far as we can see, but it certainly warrants investigation. These buildings are treasures, hundreds and hundreds of years old, but they won't last another hundred like this. This is the wall of Westminster Hall, one of the most important parts of Parliament, and the stone facade here is so weak you can actually crumble it off in your hand. The real mess is below ground. Asbestos, leaks, pipes and wiring that's decades old. It says, welcome to hell on the door. <laughs> what was in it here? It was fully congested with pipes and cables. This is one of 98 rises. This is the most significant because it runs from the basement right the way up to the roof. It goes all the way to the top yeah. of the building. There were need 2,000 of these cables and it took 18 months to identify where they go to. 18 months Eight. just to sort out this That's one right. part of the building. That's right. Untangling all of this won't just be expensive. It will be one of the most complicated restoration projects ever attempted. Until now, it's just been patched up, fixed up with real ingenuity, but it can't last. The relatively small amount of maintenance already costs a fortune. Someone told me there was 75 quid for every single tile. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, 
they're slightly more uh, complicated than you get at B and Q. But would three billion pounds be worth it? Westminster Halls hosted monarchs and governments with huge riches to spend, but we do not live in one of those eras. So why should taxpayers cough up? The Palace of Westminster is, of course, one of the great buildings of the world. I mean, it represents, in many ways, the, the national identity of Britain, not England, but Britain. It is the great expression of parliamentary democracy. Uh, it, it's the one building that everyone recognises around the world. People come here to see the building. They come here because this is where power resides. It's intoxicating, it's magical. This has to be done properly, it has to set an example, it has to be a model of how to make a historic building work for the 21st century. And yet, history can oppress as well as inspire. This is the sewer. Yep, yeah. installed in 1886. It does actually smell a bit like a sewer. Not surprisingly, perhaps preserving things as they are feels least tempting down in the Victorian sewer. How long have they been here? 130 years. 130 years. Imagine that. It's more than a century of politicians' waste. Yet some argue the House of Lords at least should move out of Westminster. Would politics be different, better maybe, if we started again? Churchill said once that we shape our buildings, then our buildings shape us. And I wonder, I just sometimes wonder that would our, would our lawmakers behave differently, more rationally and more sensibly if they worked in a more rational and sensibly designed environment? You step into the Palace of Westminster and it is absolutely magnificent, no question of that, but it would be utterly impossible to have a radical thought of any sort while you were in there. And put it this way, if you discovered that your brain surgeon or your airline pilot lived in Disneyland, I mean, you'd have some doubts about his uh, judgment, wouldn't you? I just wonder whether the overwhelming interior design of Parliament actually affects our parliamentarians in a <laughs> negative way. One senior source familiar with what has to be done says saving the building, spending the money, is likely to be expensive embarrassing and difficult. But the Victorian construction was fraught with difficulty too. One of the designers ended up in an asylum. Whatever they decide to do next with the building, this is how it was meant to be. These are some of the original plans from 1855. In the 21st century, there are two challenges. Persuading MPs and peers they might have to move and persuading the public it's worth it. The decision's rather more complex than whether you bother to get the dust sheets out when you do a spot of painting around the house. MPs and peers have to decide. Do they close this place down completely, maybe for five years, and move out, which ought to be cheaper? Move out bit by bit while the construction takes place? Or don't budge, stay here, let the work carry on around them. A very expensive, and maybe perpetual state of DIY. The decision to spend will have to be made in the early days of the next parliament. The authorities won't officially divulge their preferred option yet. The next occupants of this building, which echoes with the arguments of the past, have a complex choice ahead, but it will be all of our decision not just how to preserve, but how our parliament can prosper. Mm -hmm.